As a photographer in Sony's latest cameras, you have a number of compression options that you can utilize. This includes uncompressed RAW, compressed RAW, and lossless compressed RAW in a number of different sizes. But which of these should you actually choose, and what are the trade-offs between these? In this video, we're going to explore if there is a major difference between the compression options in Sony's latest cameras, and why you may want to use one over the other depending on a few different circumstances. So first and foremost, let's just provide some context. In newer Sony cameras like the a7R5, which I'm going to use in this video to test, and the a7 IV, you have the ability to shoot pictures in one of five different compression options within the camera. Now using the a7R5 as our example here, shooting a picture in uncompressed RAW means you are going to get a picture that is a full 61 megapixels and the entire width of the sensor. Now because uncompressed RAW files are so large, Sony has also offered for a number of years the ability to shoot compressed RAW in their cameras. Now this is a lossy compressed format, meaning yes, there is actually less data captured, even though you are still getting technically a 61 megapixel image using the full width of the sensor. But yes, there is a quality implication here when you're shooting compressed RAW, and so that is something to bear in mind. But to build a bridge sort of between the uncompressed and compressed RAW options in Sony's cameras, they have now also introduced a lossless compressed RAW option that you have in a few different sizes. This is also supposed to save on card space overall, similar to compressed RAW, but where this differs is the fact that you should not have any major degradation in quality compared to, say, what you would experience with compressed RAW. Now, there are three different size versions with lossless compressed RAW that are available, say, in the A7R5. Large is, of course, using 61 megapixels or the full sensor, medium is using 26 megapixels, and small is utilizing 15 megapixels. Each of these are preserving the same field of view, but bear in mind that for medium and small, they are utilizing a lower megapixel count, and therefore the resolution of these photos is overall also going to be smaller. So just for a point of reference, if we go through the same exact picture using each of these five different compression options, the uncompressed RAW version of this photo is going to be roughly 135 megabytes, the lossless compressed RAW large version of this photo is going to be 86.5 megabytes, the the lossless compressed medium option will be around 54 megabytes, the lossless compressed raw small option will be around 43 megabytes, and the compressed raw version of this photo will be around 74 megabytes. And this will have implications on the types of memory cards and the size you might want to consider for a camera like the a7R5, which is a topic that I talk about more in my video on memory cards for the a7R5 that I will leave a link to above and in the description below. And there is one other notable difference with these raw varieties being that with compressed raw, you have the ability to shoot up to 10 frames per second with the mechanical shutter of the a7R5. That is, of course, compared to the 7 frames per second you can shoot with the mechanical shutter using any of the other RAW varieties in this camera. And so if you're someone that wants to shoot some high frame rate bursts and get the maximum amount of photos that you can in a given period of time, compressed RAW might be an option you want to utilize for something like that. This is something I talk about in further detail in my settings video for the A7R5, which I believe a link to also above in the description below. So if we just cycle through the same photo using all these different compression options, there's a good chance that as you're looking at them, you're probably not going to notice any major difference. And that's probably expected with a shot that is correctly exposed or that you're not trying to do any larger cropping or zooming into to get a fine detail of. But let's do some comparisons here as we pixel peep these different compression options and see what they look like once we start to zoom in to the finer details of the image. All right, so here we are in Lightroom Classic, as you can see, with just a bunch of different photos I've taken. Overall, I basically shot a bunch of test photos either in single shot or bracket mode using the exact same exposure settings, but just switching the compression option between them. So these shots should be pretty consistent overall between each other. All right, so to start here, I'm going to go with the uncompressed raw and the lossless compressed raw large version option. And let's just compare these two together. So here we have the uncompressed raw version on the left and the lossless compressed raw large version on the right. What you're going to notice just looking at them from here is that they seem to be pretty identical. Of course, these images are the same resolution, so that's perhaps to be expected from this view. So now we're zoomed in here, as you can see, getting sort of a closer look. I can tell a bit of a sharpness difference, at least when it comes to the uncompressed raw version on the left here. The brick definitely does appear to be a bit sharper, as do some of these other fine details. This includes if I go over to maybe this hinge here, and also the ground, at least in terms of what's in focus here by the door. Now, I'd also say that looks very true looking at some of the fine details here. Again, a lot of this looks a lot more crisp and sharp, and has a little bit less blur and artifacting compared to what we see with the lossless compressed raw large version. Again, just looking at the brick wall here, I'm seeing very sort of similar things. You can tell not exactly one for one here in terms of how these line up, but either way, you can definitely see the details are a lot sharper here when it comes to this brick wall versus, say, on this particular photo. All right, so now we'll look at uncompressed raw on the left and lossless compressed raw medium on the right. Now, because the image resolution is different on these, you'll see 
see I'll have to sort of crop in a bit differently, but we'll get the same rough image here and then we'll start to compare what these look like. All right, so looking at these two side by side, we can definitely see that the image on the right appears to be a bit more soft. But again, we're comparing a 26 megapixel version of that image with its 61 megapixel uncompressed raw counterpart. In fact, using a 170% zoom here, as you can see, I'm pretty impressed with what this looks like overall, given the difference in resolution and megapixels used. Okay, now we're at 275% zoom. And again, I would say that in this case, you're going to really see, of course, a difference between the two, but not unsurprising here. The large lossless compressed raw definitely held up a bit better here. Again, not surprising given the fact that it's using a 61 megapixel image. Now, of course, Lightroom will sort of scale these differently given the difference in megapixel and resolution here, but overall, you can see you can definitely drill into the lossless compressed raw medium version a fair amount as well. Not, of course, to the extent that you could with uncompressed raw or large lossless compressed raw, but either way, you definitely have some latitude to zoom and crop in. Now, of course, if we compare uncompressed raw to the lossless compressed raw small version, these differences that we just noticed should be even a bit more pronounced. And yes, we will see, of course, a difference here between the 15 megapixels and the 61 megapixels on the left here, but perhaps not even a huge difference compared to what we see on the medium side. All right, we are at 933% here looking at the brick details between uncompressed raw and now the lossless compressed raw small. Yes, of course, quality difference, but again, this is almost by a factor of 10 here. But I'm gonna say even lossless compressed raw small should be usable at a factor, say, of maybe 1.5 to two times its original size. All right, so last here we have uncompressed raw on the left and compressed raw on the right. Now, of course, these are shot in the same resolution, so they will scale appropriately. And as we zoom in, certainly at least before we get into the finer details, these look pretty good and pretty similar to each other. But I would say similar to maybe the lossless compressed raw large version, you're going to start to notice a bit of a sharpness and clarity difference when we're looking at the compressed raw in a larger zoom range. Right now we're at 189% in Lightroom here. So yes, a difference in detail for sure. Also noticing a little bit of a color difference. So this sort of yellowing that we're seeing here and some of the artifacting we don't necessarily see when we look at the uncompressed raw version. Though in some cases it's interesting to see some of the detail we're losing. So you can see here we see some sort of mold and mildew here on the uncompressed raw version on this particular brick that when we look at the compressed raw version doesn't really retain any of that color, that detail for that section. Now I actually want to check the lossless compressed raw large version against the compressed raw because I definitely notice the difference between those two compared to uncompressed raw, but I'm wondering how much of a difference between each other these have. All right, lossless compressed raw large on the left and compressed raw on the right here. And we're just going to zoom in to see if we can actually tell any major differences between these two. And I would say I can tell maybe a slight, slight clarity difference and maybe an ever so slight color difference, a color shift difference that the lossless compressed raw version retains a bit better maybe compared to the compressed raw. But honestly, just in scanning across this image, it is not as dramatic as I thought it would be. But let's look at another image to see if we notice any other differences here. All right, same park, different location here. This was shot with my 70 to 200 f2.8 G Master version two lens. Here we have uncompressed raw on the left and lossless compressed raw large on the right. So again, as we start to zoom in here, I would say we're at around 71%. I'm not noticing any major difference here at least yet. Going to start to zoom into the text here. Let's see if we notice any major differences here with the text on either one. And honestly, I would say not really, at least as far as this goes. If you look at the detail of this crane here, everything that I can see in the uncompressed raw version, I can also pick out in the lossless compressed raw version. So I'm not really noticing any major differences there. All right, we're at 516% here. And again, just really looking at the details here, I'm not seeing any major differences between the two. So I would say these both hold up really equally well, at least when it comes to maybe a shot from afar. Yeah, even the skyscraper here from afar, as you can see, not looking entirely different. So certainly if you're dealing with something that has a bit less detail and you're looking at a subject from afar, you actually might not notice any difference necessarily between some of these different compression options. Now here we have uncompressed raw on the left and lossless compressed raw medium on the right. I can definitely see a little bit more fringing here and artifacting with the lossless compressed raw medium. But again, we're working with the 26 megapixel image here. The fact that this holds up as well as it does at 565% zoom is so far, I would say pretty impressive for something like this. Now looking at these hooks or lines here, I can certainly see a bit more fringing and artifacting compared to the uncompressed raw version here. Again, perhaps not unexpected, but I'm actually really impressed with how well this has held up at its particular zoom range. All right, uncompressed raw on the left and lossless compressed raw small on the right. So 61 megapixels versus 15 megapixels at 542%. And honestly, it's not 
as significant a difference as you might think it is. Even looking at this crane here, these lines are a lot more defined compared to what you're going to see there, given the difference in detail and resolution. But honestly, I'm actually really impressed with how well this is holding up. All right, and of course we have to do it. We have uncompressed raw on our left and compressed raw on our right. And again, I can see a bit more clarity and detail when it comes to the uncompressed raw. You can tell the image is a bit more soft. Maybe the color is a bit less vibrant with the version of the uncompressed raw. But honestly, even here, not a major, major difference. And again, even at 644% here, just looking at uncompressed versus compressed raw, I am pretty impressed with how similar these are between each other. But of course, zooming in and pixel peeping an image is only one way of maybe testing these compression options out. One of the things we've yet to test thus far is how these different compression options hold up when either you under or overexpose by at least a somewhat significant amount. Do these options at that point or the reduction in megapixel count still retain enough information for you to be able to recover this image and utilize the benefits of what you'd hope you'd be able to do with a raw photo? So to test this, I actually took some bracketed images here. I shot a series of five different brackets, each at a different of 2.5 stops in between. Now a five stop overexposure is actually really tough to recover no matter which raw compression option you use. So instead we're going to try to recover the 2.5 stop overexposed image and see how that holds up between the different compressions. Now when it comes to underexposing, I do think we can actually get away with the five stop underexposed image and try to recover those between the different compression options. Even though they will be a bit noisy, they should give us a decent idea of what we can do between them. So let me at least attempt to correct the over and underexposed images in these sets here and then we'll take a look at them and compare. All right, so for over and underexposure, we'll compare these slightly differently. On the left, we'll use the actual correctly exposed image that we've just done some basic corrections to. And then on the right, we will use the 2.5 stops overexposed image and show what that looks like. All right, so uncompressed raw recovered here with the overexposed one, which you can see is on the right. And honestly, of course, you can see we've lost a bit of color and detail in the sky. But overall, I would say the main parts of the home here that we can see. And other than some of those finer highlights, we have most of the image still intact. All right, so comparing our compressed raw and our lossless compressed raw large version of these images and I would say they look pretty similar you might notice a slight difference in the sky but again the clouds and things were shifting as I shot this but overall as I'm just looking at the different details here as I'm looking at sort of the colors and how they were maintained I would say these are relatively consistent the exposure adjustment might have been fixed to be a little bit brighter here on the uncompressed raw version but overall I would say these end up being very very similar okay now this starts to get a bit more interesting so once we look at the uncompressed raw version on the left and the lossless compressed raw medium version. Again, we're working with the same compression, but now with a 26 megapixel sensor. And while again, most of the home and details here seem to look okay, we definitely have a difference in a loss of dynamic range with the sky here. You can see, I really can't see much of any blue. It looks like we're just sort of working with a regular sort of gray white cast sky here. And yes, of course the scale isn't going to be exactly identical here as I go across them, but we've definitely lost a bit of that blue hue and a bit of that highlight range, it seems, with the lossless compressed raw a medium option. All right, now we're going to look at uncompressed raw versus lossless compressed raw small. And very similar to the medium, I would say we can certainly see a difference with the sky again as well. A lot less color here overall. It actually looks a bit more blown out and a bit more colorless even compared to what we saw with the lossless compressed raw medium option. So again, just sort of zoomed in on the skies here, we can see a lot more blue and this sort of trail of cloud here, whereas here it just sort of looks mostly like a wash. Of course, because we've lost some of that dynamic range, you can tell we have a lot of fine details on the branches here that we're seeing that just sort of evaporate into not much of anything here. Now, another interesting thing I'm seeing here is just looking at the home. You can see we've sort of lost a lot of detail on this side of the window here with the lossless compressed raw small version, whereas here, uncompressed raw, we have the full view of that. And just to round things off, we have uncompressed raw on the left and compressed raw on the right. And I would say, honestly, these have a very, very equivalent looking amount of dynamic range between the two. You'll remember what we mentioned just a moment ago with the window with the lossless compressed raw small version. Well, now, of course, we can see the detail on both of these and they're both intact. So that is certainly good to see. And just as well, looking at these branches and sort of the details here and the color of the sky, this looks to be roughly equivalent and retained here as well. So now let's do the same thing, but we'll do this instead with underexposure. All right, so for a reference comparison, we have our regularly exposed photo, which is some basic corrections here on the left and our five stop underexposed photo here on the right. Both of these shot in uncompressed raw. You know, as I start to zoom in here, of course, we're going to see a bit more noise and a slight loss of detail here when it comes to that underexposed photo, just given how this had to be shot to accommodate the low exposure in the bracket overall. But honestly, looking at the sky, we have a decent amount of color detail, of course, because we didn't really compromise the highlights in this exercise. And yes, we're at 137% now. Certainly in some of the mid-tones, you can see the noise and everything. But as we pull back to this photo, even at around 74%, 50%, this honestly looks pound for pound a almost near identical image and probably a certain 
definitely usable image as well if you needed to actually recover a photo that was that massively underexposed and make something of it. So now that we have our reference, let's look at the other underexposed photos and how they stack up to our uncompressed raw version. So uncompressed raw on the left and lossless compressed raw large on the right. And honestly, as we zoom in here again, noting the color differences we talked about previously, I would say these are looking very, very, very similar to one another. Again, maybe a slight bit of additional detail when it comes to the uncompressed raw photo. But again, very similarly, at least from the same rough zoom range, I would say these photos are almost equally usable if you needed to be in a situation where you had to recover another exposed shot. And so that's something that's definitely good to note here. All right, lossless compressed raw large on the left and lossless compressed raw medium on the right here. One thing I have noticed is definitely a bit less vibrant colors here compared to the uncompressed raw recovery that we did. Again, you can't exactly pixel peep these two together because they're not quite the same resolution. But overall, I would say still a surprisingly usable image. Again, now comparing lossless compressed raw large on the left and lossless compressed raw small on the right. And yes, resolution differences abound. Yes, of course, you can see noise here once you zoom in. A bit less vibrant colors, I would also agree, just like we noticed with the lossless compressed medium option. But overall, I would say still a usable image in the grand scheme of things. And again, because I know we've been deviating a bit here with the comparisons, we have our uncompressed raw version again on the left now, and we have our now compressed raw version on the right. And overall, just zooming in, yes, I would say certainly more detail on the uncompressed raw version, but perhaps not by the most massive amount you might think. I actually wouldn't be surprised if some of these different color differences show up a bit more prominently depending on the compression you use when you're recovering from an extreme situation like this. Either way, I would say in extreme conditions like this, I'm pretty impressed with each of the compression options, and it's nice to know you could actually get a usable image back from it if you encountered a situation where you had to. Okay, so in summary, what is my take here? Yes, it is true that uncompressed raw still remains king when it comes to all the different extremities, whether needing to zoom in or punch in and get the clearest of details in a photo or recover from a massively under or overexposed situation. That said, I think it's worth saying that when it comes to lossless compressed raw large and compressed raw, you are actually getting a lot of bang for your buck for being able to reduce your file size by almost half. Yes, it can handle the under and overexposure situations very, very similarly to what you would get with uncompressed raw. And unless you're pixel peeping at a magnification of around five to 10 times with a very, very fine and close up detail, you might not actually notice a difference between any of these compression options. Now, when we're talking about lossless compressed raw medium and small, this does look a bit different though. Because these are lower resolution images that are being taken with less megapixels from the camera's sensor, you will actually experience a reduction in not just quality in terms of being able to pixel peep or zoom into that image, but also a reduction in dynamic range when it comes to recovering from massive over or under exposures as we tested in this situation. Again, even these are edge cases in the grand scheme of things, but certainly something you should keep in mind. All in all, I have someone that's used compressed raw when it comes to a lot of the different gigs that I've done with photography. And I would say that after going through these tests and exploring these different situations, that is largely a good option, much as is lossless compressed raw large. But it's also good to have in mind those situations I might be able to get away with even a bit less, say when it comes to lossless compressed raw medium and small, or perhaps where I want the maximum in detail quality and dynamic range and uncompressed raw would be the way to go there. There are of course trade-offs between these different compression options, but as long as you know the differences and are aware of them, you should be able to make the right decision in whatever situation you are in. So that is my look into the different compression options of the Sony a7R5 and their other newer cameras. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. A lot more content to come on the a7R5, so definitely subscribe and stay tuned for that and check out my existing videos on the channel. For now, that is all I have to say, so thanks for watching.